What's going on everyone? Welcome to my first mock draft. This is actually my second recording. I recorded it once and it was a 30 minute recording and my mic was messed up. So I gotta do it all over again. Hopefully I'll do it better though. You know, that'll be the silver lining in all this. Anyway, I put in a lot of time on these graphics for this mock draft. So hopefully you enjoy the production. I do that because I don't show highlights on this channel because I don't wanna mess around with copyright. I don't wanna stress about that. And getting highlights would be a lot more work just for more stress, just doesn't really make sense. So I, I never do highlights for that reason. I've had multiple people ask me lately uh, and that's the reason why. So that's why I put all the time into the graphics to kind of make up for that. So hopefully you enjoy this graphical production. If you haven't subscribed yet, definitely hit that subscribe button below. Turn that red thing gray, right? I think it goes red from gray. Uh, and subscribe to the channel. Even if you're not a Blazer fan, we'll have a bunch of draft stuff coming up. We'll have mock drafts like these. We'll have draft profiles at some point. And uh, if you're interested in that sort of thing, you should hit that subscribe button. Even if you're a fan of another team, we have content for everyone. Also leave a like on this video. It would be cool if this video caught the algorithm. Mock drafts have the potential to do that. So if you hit that like button, it might help me out in that goal. And it's the easiest way you can support me. Anyway, with that being said, let's jump into this mock draft. With the first overall pick, I have the Oklahoma City Thunder selecting Chet Holmgren, the big man out of Gonzaga. It'll be a race in the weight room between him and Pokushevsky as to see who can put on muscle the fastest. That's obviously the one knock with Chet Holmgren, but his blend of immense defensive upside, offensive upside, can handle the ball, can shoot the ball. We'll have a draft profile on him going more in depth on some of his skill sets. Um, but if you don't know about Chet Holmgren, you should definitely do your research. The dude is my top big board prospect right now. Uh, I just think he has the most upside in this draft and I think OKC will bet on that and take him number one overall if they end up at this pick. Now, something I didn't mention in this mock draft, I did a lottery sim. And even though I'm a Blazer fan, if the Blazers get screwed in the lottery sim, I'm still gonna use that sim. Okay, so Blazers are up next. It's just what the lottery sim did. It's just what Tankathon did. So shout out to Tankathon. At two, I have the Portland Trail Blazers selecting Jabari Smith, the forward out of Auburn. Portland needs to fill two starting forward spots this offseason. Taking Jabari Smith would fill one of them. He would make a lot of sense for them as an instant 3 and D guy. He's a good perimeter defender. And Portland needs that right now. And he can also knock down the three at a very high level. He will honestly probably have an easier time scoring the ball in the NBA than he did in college because he'll get higher quality shots. He struggled to get good shots at Auburn last year. Their guard play was suspect. And he goes from that to playing next to Damian Lillard and Anthony Simons, and I think he would thrive as a rookie off of that. With the third overall pick, I have the Houston Rockets selecting Paulo Bancaro, the forward out of Duke. Uh, Bancaro's a friend of Jalen Green's, and Bancaro is a guy I can see Houston taking number one or number two overall, but they luck out and get him here at three. I don't know what their plan is with Christian Wood long term. He can potentially start at center with Bancaro at the four, but they also have Alperen Shangun, who looked pretty solid his rookie year, so it might be best to move off of Christian Wood. Bancaro and Shangun long term in the front court would be questionable defensively, but both guys have good playmaking skills for their position and a nice skill set, so offensively it would be a lot of fun with the fourth overall pick the pelicans via the lakers jump up into the top four this is the lakers unprotected pick that they traded for anthony davis and with the fourth overall pick the pelicans take Jaden ivy they recently traded for cj mccollum to be their lead guard that's a position they needed and now they have two dynamic guards there in the backcourt Jaden ivy would fit in seamlessly into the starting lineup next to cj mccollum next to brandon ingram and zion williamson and he would be a lot of fun playing next to Zion Williamson, assuming he can get on the court at some point, given that Jaden Ivey is a freak athlete at the guard spot, and it reminds some people of John Morant, and then Zion Williamson, we all know what he can do as an athlete. And then you got CJ McCollum, Brandon Ingram in that lineup offensively. That would be a scary, scary team long-term. Pretty young team, CJ McCollum's the vet there. Ivey, Williamson, and Ingram would be the young guys. That would be a pretty good situation for New Orleans to be in, given all the picks that they have in the future as well. With the fifth overall pick, I have the Orlando Magic selecting Shaden Sharp, the guard out of Kentucky, did not play a single minute in college, so this dude is a lottery ticket type of prospect. He's a guy that I think might have the most upside in the draft outside of Chet Holmgren. He has a lot of defensive upside, he moves his feet pretty well, has good hip 
mobility. I think he could potentially be a lockdown guy on that end. I see some people that don't think he's a good defender coming into the draft. I disagree. He's reportedly 6'6 with a 7 foot wingspan, so can play the shooting guard or small forward spots. And he's just scratching the surface in terms of self creation and what he can do offensively, in my opinion. So, with Orlando, a team which has some question marks at the big man spots going into this offseason with Mo Bamba being a restricted free agent, and then they have a bunch of guards with Suggs, Fultz, Cole Anthony. Uh, it makes sense to take a wing here in Shaden Sharp. I think it makes a ton of sense for them as a high upside boomer bust type of prospect. With the sixth overall pick, I have the Detroit Pistons selecting AJ Griffin, a forward out of Duke. I'm really curious to see his measurements in the draft combine. I feel like he might be a little bit undersized at the three and that might cause him to fall down draft boards. But right now, given the fact that he might be the best shooter in the draft, looks like he can play some small forward, has a long wingspan, has some self-creation ability, and has the potential to potentially grow into a better athlete. He was a freak athlete in high school, had a leg injury, didn't show that same athleticism his one year in college. If he can gain some of that then he could be a steal here at six at seven i have the indiana pacers selecting keegan murray the forward out of iowa Indiana's in a weird transitional period. They uh, traded Demonis Sabonis for Tyrese Halliburton. They got Chris Duarte. They're kind of set on guards. Who knows what they're going to do with their front court with Miles Turner there. Jalen Smith is going to be a free agent. They traded for him at the deadline. So Keegan Murray would make a lot of sense there as a high floor guy that could come in and play right away. Will probably end up being an NBA starter. I have some question marks about his overall ceiling, but he's a pretty safe pick here at seven. At eight, I have the Sacramento Kings selecting Benedict Matherin, the wing out of Arizona. He is a guy who had a leap in his sophomore year there at Arizona. It's part of the reason they did so well. And Sacramento has a little bit of a need on the perimeter. They traded out two guards for a big man, Halliburton and Heald for Demonis Sabonis, so they could use a shooting guard long-term. I don't know if they plan on starting Davion Mitchell with Tyrese Halliburton long-term. That would be a very undersized backcourt. Matherin would be a more traditional fit there at the two guard position and could replace what Buddy Heald provided as a guy that can shoot, come off screens. He is a little bit more athletic, so might have more upside than Buddy Heald ever had and would make sense as the starting shooting guard next to Fox. But if he has the measurables to play small forward, you could also see him that at that position. At nine, you have the San Antonio Spurs maybe taking a reach here, but they're going with Ushman Jiang. The forward out of France who's had a meteoric rise up draft boards. He was looked at as a second round pick a couple of months ago, but ended his season in the NBL strong and has catapulted himself into late lottery conversation. San Antonio last year took Josh Primo at 13. He was looked at as a fringe first round pick, so they're obviously not scared to take a chance on a guy they really like. They have had success with a French player before. We all know who that was. So taking Ousmane Jang, who I feel like they think they could develop into an all-star type player given some of his self-creation abilities at 6'9", good defensive player. I think that there's a really good chance that he ends up going higher than anybody thought and rising up to 9 and being taken by San Antonio. With the 10th overall pick, I have the Washington Wizards selecting Jalen Duran, the center out of Memphis. Jalen Duran would make a lot of sense for San Antonio. If they don't go Jang, I could see them going Duran. But at 10, I think Washington has to take him just because he's the best prospect on the board. There's no doubt about that at this point in the draft. They do have Daniel Gafford, and he was tabbed as a breakout guy to start the season. He didn't really break out. They do have Porzingis. They have Hachimura. Avdia can play some four. So they might have a little bit of a logjam, but I don't think that matters to them at this point. They need talent. They need young talent talent and Jalen Duran makes a lot of sense here just as a value pick. At 11, I have the New York Knicks selecting Johnny Davis, the shooting guard out of Wisconsin. He flirted with potentially being a top five pick earlier in his college season, but some struggles to end the year, especially from the three point line has caused him to slip down draft boards. But at 11, I think this is a really good value pick for New York. I don't really know if they will need Johnny Davis, they have Alec Burks and Evan Fournier, Emmanuel Quickly, Derek Rose. They have a lot of perimeter players, but I don't know how many of them are going to stick around long term. So I think just going for the best player available, just going for value makes some sense here for New York. And Johnny Davis is that. At 12, I have the Oklahoma City Thunder selecting Jeremy Sohan with their second first round pick. And he makes a ton of sense as a forward that might be the best perimeter defender in this year's draft. They took the best rim protector at number one with Chet Holmgren. Taking Jeremy Sohan to play next to him long term would make for a very good defensive pairing. You could even see some jumbo lineups with Sohan at the three, Chet at the four, and somebody else at the five, which could be intriguing because Chet has 
has some ball skills there. Jeremy Sohan has some ball skills as well. The knock on him is he can't shoot, but if he can figure that out, he could be a steal because he can handle the ball, he can pass the ball, and he can defend. So a uh, very good, young, uh, developable piece here for OKC. At 13, I have the Charlotte Hornets selecting Tari Eason, forward that can defend and has some offensive upside, makes a lot of sense long-term next to LaMelo Ball. They have James Booknight and Terry Rozier at the guard position, so they don't really need a guard. They need some forward depth. They need to figure out the center position. So if Jalen Duren fell here, they would be ecstatic. I think they might package the 13th and 15th overall picks to trade up for Jalen Duren, but... This isn't a mock draft with trades. That'll be the next mock draft. I'll alternate no trades and trades, okay? So uh, just a little teaser. I'll probably have that trade in there because they have the 15th overall pick as well. But if they stay here, Tari Issa makes a lot of sense for them. At 14, I have the Cleveland Cavaliers selecting Dyson Daniels, a jumbo guard slash wing out of the G League Ignite. He's Australian. Reminds you a little bit of Josh Giddy, a better defensive version. He has similar struggle shooting the ball, but can pass six foot seven without shoes reportedly. And he would make a lot of sense as a guy that could play three positions, maybe even four positions long term for Cleveland. They have Evan Mobley at the four, Jared Allen at the five. They have a big lineup. So Dyson Daniels as a guard at six foot seven could be going all in on size there in Cleveland. I don't know what Cleveland is planning on do with, doing with Colin Sexton, but if he gets a restrictive free agent offer that Cleveland doesn't want to match, it would be nice to have a Dyson Daniels there to replace some of his production. Ricky Rubio is coming off a major injury and is a free agent, so they could use Dyson Daniels even if they keep Colin Sexton. Uh, I think Daniels could play right away as a guy that can play really good defense and play make. With the 15th overall pick, I have the Charlotte Hornets selecting Nikola Jovic, the forward out of Serbia. I think Jovic is being slept on a little bit. He's a raw prospect, but has a lot of upside offensively, in my opinion. Has shown a lot of offensive flashes. Can handle the ball at 6'10". Uh, can shoot the ball okay. He needs to get better there, but uh, he's a guy that I could see becoming a really good offensive role player. And given his size and agility, I think he could be a decent defender, much like Denny Avdia did in Washington. He wasn't looked at as a good defender coming into the draft and had a really good defensive season this past year. So Jovic, I really like for Charlotte, who could use some forwards long term, as I said. And given that this is their second first round pick, he might be stashed for a year. I don't know what the plan is there. With the 16th overall pick, I have the Atlanta Hawks selecting Oshayak Baji, the defending national championship and final for uh, MVP, whatever they call it. He makes a lot of sense in the starting backcourt next to Trey Young long term. They have Kevin Herter and DeAndre Hunter on the wings, so he'd have to supplant one of those. Maybe he could start at the three. I think he looks a little bit bigger than he measured in at, but we'll see what his measurements are. Another guy that I'm curious to see uh, at the draft combine, I'm curious to see what he measures in as, but he would make a ton of sense as the starting shooting guard next to Trey Young, playing kind of a Klay Thompson type of role, just knocking down threes at a high clip, playing good defense, and doing a little bit off the dribble. And I could see Atlanta trying to recreate Stephen Clay with Trey and Oshai. At 17, I have the Houston Rockets selecting Ty Ty Washington, the guard out of Kentucky. He was looked at as a lottery pick earlier in his college season, but some struggles down the stretch with injury and then a poor performance in the first round of the NCAA tournament against St. Peter's has caused him to fall down draft boards. At this point in the draft, this is just a value pick for Houston. They don't have a long-term point guard, so it could be Ty Ty Washington in the backcourt next to Jalen Green. They took Bancaro, a power forward, with the third overall pick, so Ty Ty Washington makes a lot of sense here at 17. At 18, I have the Chicago Bulls selecting Mark Williams, who I think would come in and be their backup center right away as a guy who has decent agility and athleticism for a big man, super long wingspan, and looks like he could be a good defensive player from day one. Nikola Vucevic took a step back this year. His production wasn't that good. He could be an asset that they maybe look to move or that they look to get off of in the next couple of years. And having a guy like Mark Williams, who I think has the potential to become a starting center in the next couple of years for a Chicago team trying to win some games in the playoffs right now would make a lot of sense for the Bulls. At 19, I have the Minnesota Timberwolves selecting EJ Liddell, the power forward out of Ohio State. He's undersized at 6'7", but can shoot the ball, has a good little floater slash hook shot, and can play defense and can pass it a little bit. So he makes sense as a guy that could come in and play right away for a Minnesota team coming off a playoff berth. I think him playing a key role off the bench as a rookie, potentially, would make a lot of sense for the Timberwolves. At 20, I have the San Antonio Spurs selecting Malachi Branham with their second first 
round pick. Branham is a great value pick here at 20. The Spurs have a lot of guards. Just drafted Josh Primo with their lottery pick last year. They still have Lonnie Walker. They have Trey Jones. They have DeJounte Murray, of course. They have Josh Richardson as well, who can play the two or the three. So they have a little bit of a logjam there, but I think that they're going to move off a couple of those pieces, and I think they just go for value at this point in the draft, and Branham is a great value here at 20 as a guard that has slashing ability, really picture-perfect pull-up jump shot can knock down threes at a high level has defensive upside and can play make a little bit he could end up being the steal of the draft at 21 i have the denver nuggets selecting kendall brown the forward out of baylor i put lsu i'm not gonna fix it uh i'll fix it next time he's out of baylor that's my mistake i made one mistake with these graphics maybe i made another one if i made another one let me know uh but kendall brown makes a ton of sense for denver as an on-ball defender which denver sorely needs and kendall brown could play right away for them he has a questionable three-point shot but I don't think his form looks too bad so if he can just knock down threes at a adequate enough level to space the floor I think he would play as a rookie a lot of minutes for a team like Denver because he's a good cutter and an athlete so that works well off of Nikola Jokic offensively and then they sorely just need an on-ball defender there in Denver and Kendall Brown that's one of his strengths so he would be a perfect fit at 21 for Denver at 22 I have the Memphis Grizzlies selecting Patrick Baldwin Jr. the six foot nine shooting forward out of Milwaukee he went to play for his dad there his freshman season he might have regretted it because he was looked at as a potential top 10 pick heading into the season he was a top 10 prospect in his class but a rough freshman season at the university of milwaukee really uh, caused him to drop down draft boards he is a guy that is a shooter that has some offensive off the dribble upside but he struggled to shoot the ball this year in college so that's what's caused him to fall down draft boards but memphis has a lot of depth they can take a chance on a high upside prospect right here and he could be a guy that long term just develops into a really good spot up shooter at the small forward and power forward position and could help space the floor for john morant at 23 i have the brooklyn nets taking Jaden Hardy guard out of the G League Ignite he was also looked at as a top 10 pick heading into this season but has fallen down draft boards Brooklyn hasn't been afraid to go for offensive minded players that had some upside in the past that pick has seemingly worked out so far with Cam Thomas last year who's kind of in the same mold and I think they might double down and go with Jaden Hardy who's a little bit more of a point guard but definitely still uh, a combo guard who needs to work on some playmaking skills and just making the right play in general Role, but he can definitely score the ball and i think brooklyn might take a chance on that at 24 i have the milwaukee bucks selecting Br blake wesley the guard out of notre dame he is a guy that can score the ball a decent athlete just kind of an all-around solid guy with some upside offensively milwaukee is a team that hasn't really developed perimeter players off the bench long term they've kind of rotated guys in and out now they got Grayson Allen playing some good minutes for them in the playoffs but I think it would make sense for Milwaukee to try and develop a uh, scoring guard off the bench long term to play behind Chris Middleton Giannis Drew Holiday you know we'll see how long he remains at the level that he's playing at there in Milwaukee so Blake Wesley it would be a good guy for them to develop and take at 24 in my opinion at 25 I have the San Tony Spurs selecting Ismail Kamagate center out of France another French player Tony Parker would be proud he's a guy that I think has some upside looks like he's a fluid athlete I haven't watched enough tape on him but he looks like a guy that is just one of those raw big men who has athletic ability and maybe has some developmental offensive skills and San Antonio with four picks in this draft could definitely take a chance on a draft and stash guy and I think that's what Kamagati would be here at 25 at 26 I have the Dallas Mavericks selecting Christian Coloco the center out of Arizona I love this pick for Dallas Dallas. They haven't been able to find a long-term starting center there for a while. They tried Willie Cauley-Stein, Maxi Kleba, Porzingis played some center, but they traded him. They have Dwight Powell playing a lot of center minutes right now. They could really try and lock down that center position. And with Walker Kessler, Mark Williams, and Christian Coloco, all his solid center targets i think if dallas stays here at 26 they'll take whichever one of those guys is left on the board coloco makes a lot of sense as a great defensive player 
who has some decent agility, decent wingspan, could come in right away and play big minutes for Dallas, in my opinion, as just a guy that can protect the rim and be a good pick and roll finisher playing off of Luka Doncic. But I really like Coloco because I think he's shown flashes of some developmental offensive traits. He's improved his three-point percentage from somewhere around 40% his freshman year to 73% his junior year, if I recall correctly. So that sort of free throw improvement maybe gives you some hope that he can develop a jump shot and space the floor and then he's also shown shown some flashes of being able to pass the ball and make plays for others so you get that on top of good rim running ability a good pick and roll lob target and defense and that could be an absolute steal here at 26 for a team that badly needs a player like a christian coloco at 27 i have the miami heat selecting kennedy chandler the guard out of tennessee i think kennedy chandler would be the long-term kyle lowry replacement and a guy that miami would pour a lot of time into developing Miami has developed players pretty well over the past couple of years and Kennedy Chandler I think would be lucky to end up in a situation like Miami I think they would develop him well he's pretty damn quick has some offensive ability can pass the ball you know just kind of your typical quick six foot one maybe a little bit shorter than that point guard in Miami would be a great landing spot for him at 28 I have the Warriors taking Marjan Beauchamp out of the G League Ignite played at Yakima Valley Community College I played in that league I played there, um, not at the same time. I played there way back in my day. You know, I'm, I'm a little bit older than, than a Marjan Beauchamp, but uh, he's a guy that kind of reminds you a little bit of a Jordan Poole type of pick. Took a much different path, but just a guy that has some offensive upside, some off the dribble shooting ability that Golden State might want to tap into. He's reportedly six foot seven, so could play some three as well. And I could see Golden State really taking a liking to him and thinking that they can develop him much like they've developed Jordan Poole. At 29, I have the Memphis Grizzlies selecting Orlando Robinson, the center out of Fresno State. He's a guy that I've seen mocked late in the second round. I don't think he will last that long because offensively, he has a really good skill set he can dribble the ball he's shifty with it for a big man he can shoot the ball and he can pass the ball and those types of skill sets teams take a liking to he's a little bit undersized at the center position but i think he's big enough to be a bench player at least at that position uh, that's kind of the one knock with him is defensively he has some question marks especially if he's playing the center uh doesn't have a ton of rim protection ability that he's shown but given his agility and athleticism maybe a team like a Memphis thinks that they can develop that part of his game and get a steal given what he can do on the offensive end so he'd make a lot of sense at 29 for Memphis and then the final pick of the first round at 30 I have OKC taking Christian Brown with their third first round pick coming off a national championship he was a big key for Kansas winning it all this past season and at six foot seven can play the shooting guard or small forward position he can knock down shots take guys off the dribble finish around the rim I think defensively he has a little bit of upside as well so OKC who has a lot of guards and has some big men they took two uh, power forwards with Chet Holmgren and Jeremy Sohan earlier in this draft it would make sense to go for a wing with some size that could play either the two or the three and that's Christian Brown now let's take a look at the second round I'll just talk about notable picks Walker Kessler I've seen getting some top 20 love but I think he could fall a little bit he would make sense to Indiana at 31 to potentially be a backup big to Miles Turner or maybe supplant him long term if they move off of him for your Portland Trailblazers Jalen Williams at 36 would make a lot of sense as a uh, forward maybe an undersized center that can shoot the ball a little bit would make some sense next to Trenton Watford. Uh, Jalen Williams has shown the ability to pass as well and looks like he could be a solid defensive player. I've seen him mock to go lower than this, but I think he will rise up draft boards. David Roddy would be a steal at 37, one of my favorite second round prospects. Caleb Houston at 39, just a forward that can shoot the ball and space the floor would make sense for Cleveland. Wendell Moore at 40, great value pick in my opinion. I think he could fall down draft boards and make a lot of sense for a team trying to win games and that would be Minnesota. Soda. Vince Williams Jr. at 41 I think is being slept on good bench piece for the Pelicans to go get he can at least replace what Garrett Temple was doing this season Trevor Keels at 51 feels a bit low and would be a terrific get for Golden State there uh, I feel like I'll probably put him higher in my next mock draft I didn't feel comfortable putting him at 51 it just ended up that way you got a couple forfeited picks there as well with Milwaukee and Miami you got Isaiah Mobley going to join his brother in Cleveland at 
58. And then Bryce McGowan's, I feel like, is a little bit too low at 59. But uh, he was a guy that I struggled to find a spot for. A couple of shooting guards that I feel like I put a little bit too low on this mock draft. But in the second round, when teams are drafting for need and position, that is bound to happen. So 59, I think Portland would take just a chance on a value play here with Bryce McGowan's. Anyway, those are the notable picks of the second round. Anyway, that wraps up this mock draft. Thank you for watching. I will have more in the future. So definitely subscribe if you haven't. Leave a like on this video. Like I said, at the start of the thing, it really helps out the channel and it's the easiest way to support me. And let me know what you think about this mock draft, about any of the selections. Let me know if I was too low or too high on somebody. And then let me know if there's anything I should change with these mock drafts to make them a little bit better. I spent a lot of time on this and I want to try and perfect these videos to make them as good as possible for you. So let me know if there's anything that you think I can improve with them. With that being said, I am out of here. I'll catch you in the next one. Until then, as always, peace out. Go Blazers.